if configurable for difference of two means. So what does that mean? You say, oh, I want to improve my process. I do exampling before, say, pollution clean up a river. I need to clean up a heavy metal. So I do sampling beforehand, I do sampling afterwards, I claim, oh, I cleaned up now. I have a positive, so let's go ahead and do example, clean up. So before, I have examples, 15 different sites of the river, I find the contamination level of heavy metal is 3.84 milligram per liter of contaminants, whatever I want to clean up, with standard deviation 3.07, of course, same thing here, and I do a, afterwards, I said, oh, uh, EPA, I did some cleaning up my X2. Afterwards, is only 1.49 milligram per liter with a standard deviation of 0 0.8. And uh, you see how my X bar reduced from 3.84, so you say, ah, oh, see, EPA grant me my license, I cleaned the river. The hell you did. You can't submit this. This is not legitimate. You got to do a conflict interval to show the no matter you don't know what the what we want to know is mu two and this mu one. What's mu two minus mu one? That has to be a reduction. Because mu is a population, but you can't get at it. So you must construct a conflict interval for the true population uh, before and after. So you put a bound again. This is going to be x1 bar minus x2 bar minus something. And this is going to be x1 bar minus x2 bar plus something. This something, I tell you what, how to, again, is based on s1, s2, n1, n2, and x1, and x2. And only if this number, we want to go down. So x1 is before, this is after. So we want this number to be positive number, right? Positive number means before is higher than after. You, so here is the most important use of conflict interval when you want to compare before. Most, most, most important. I'm going to drill that into you. If you don't remember this, don't bother calculating this. You want both of this number, lower bound, upper bound, to be positive number, larger than zero. That means the after situation is less than before. You say, I don't know what the true difference is. I can tell you it's 95% confidence somewhere between here and here. Since they're both positive, meaning there's the net reduction. How much? I don't know. Somewhere in here. But let's give an example. So the example based on this particular one here, you would have um, 3.84 minus 1.49. And this number next here, again, is a T value. Now, I only have less than 30. I got to use a T value, which for a combined degree of freedom 16, which takes some calculation. I don't have time to cover it. Anyway, the T value that leads 2.5% to the right that covers degree of freedom 16. And this number happened to be 2.12. I'm just going to write my cheat notes over here. And this next number here that I'm going to it looks complicated, but again, this formula is ev over every single st statistic book. So don't worry, don't bother to, calc to memorize it, but mainly you need to understand how to do something. So let's go ahead and do this. So this is point two. This S1 square is this 3.07 square. This N1 is 15, and this one is 1.49 squared, and this one is N to 12. You grind this out, this number 2.12, and you do all this thing here, and after you do that, you have 2.35 plus or minus 1.75, minus here and there. Anyway, you clean that up, what you have is 0 0.6 milligram per liter, less than mu1 minus mu2, minus, less than 4.1 milligram per liter. Okay, this interval, what the, the, what the heck does that mean when you write your report to your engineering management? Remember, your engineering management may be somebody who's in the management position for a long time that may not know what have confident interval, how would you write it, put it in plain old English. So what this means is that I don't know what the true reduction in my contaminant is. That's this guy right here. I do know it's 95% confident. Why 95? Because I did 2.5% here. So this is 95% confidence level. I can tell you with 95% confidence that it's somewhere between reduction of 0.6 milligram per liter and 
Now that's a fairly wide variation. You say, is it somewhere in the middle? No, you cannot say that. All you can say is somewhere between this lower bound and this upper bound, 95. It could be actually 0.7. It could be 3.9. Suppose EPA says, no, no, you must reduce this by 1.0, at least 1.0. Then this particular cleanup effort failed. Even though nominally X2 bar is, 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 looks pretty good, that doesn't mean a thing. Don't you ever submit just the sample average. You are not, you'd be a laughing stock engineer. You must do this confidence interval to show both sides are more than zero and that it meets whatever the stringency you require. So what I can show in these two examples then is the actual calculation, but mainly the interpretation of what a confidence level is. And the actual calculation you can find in every standard uh, undergraduate statistic table. So next couple of videos, I'll tell you about something else. Bye.